Hi, welcome to the uh, lecture on Chapter 4, Firewall Practical Application. Now, Chapter 3, we covered more specifics as to what a firewall does and the different types of firewalls, uh, what they can and can't protect. Now we're going to look at more of the uh, different types of firewalls out there, uh, and uh, that way at least you have some information to be able to make a determination as to, based on your home or small office, uh, which uh, ones you may want to use. So um, we're going to talk about the requirements of the firewalls for a couple of different types, whether it's a small office, network, uh, enterprise, single machine. Uh, talk about the different needs and constraints of individual or company to determine what the appropriate firewall for you is. Uh, of course, then you got to compare the different solutions so you can make a uh, determination. And given a different scenario, which would be a good combination? So this chapter looks at the practical requirements of most common firewall. Um, you know, now, granted, the solutions here are you know, not one that we're going to make a recommendation for. Um, no, so it just... Uh, just giving you information. So most of us have, at least at home, a single machine firewall. Uh, you got a PC, desktop, laptop at home, uh, connect to the internet. Uh, it's used for a home office uh, or an individual workstation. Um, some of the things that are common to these are they, they offer packet filtering uh, or screening. Uh, they're almost always software-based and relatively easy to configure. Um, now, granted, <clears throat> helpful, you know, getting help, you know, it's helpful for as a supporting network, but it definitely should not be your only solution. So it, it's good, but not the best. So the target of these are your home users, and like I said, they're easy to use, they're low cost, even free to download. They're meant for essential security, but not high security. Uh, and they're available for all operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac. Now, the Windows 10 firewalls provides free full functioning firewall, blocks inbound and outbound packets, uh, configurable, configurable through Windows Firewall Advanced Security app. So you got to make sure you get the Windows Firewall. Go to the Advanced Security. Uh, figure 4.1 shows you how to get there. And it, you can apply different rules depending on what uh, traffic source you want. Now, as a default, it has turned off the logging feature. So if you're wanting to know who's trying to break in or what package you're trying to get, you can go and turn that logging feature on. Now, there is a Windows 10 user account control, uh, but it is not a firewall. Now, <laughs> it's strongly related to security, but it basically prompts for ad the, the computer's admin credentials to perform certain tasks. Uh, so, so it is useful, use beneficial. So that means at least the only administrator can install or do certain uh, system modifications. Now, as far as Linux are confused, it uses a feature called IP tables. Um, it's the primary firewall for the latest and greatest Linux versions. It, it's got three different types of objects, uh, tables, chains, and rules. Um, and the three tables and their chains uh, are either packet filtering, uh, network, address translation, uh, NAT, for those of you who remember your networking skills, and packet alteration. Uh, so those are the standards you got there. Now, Semantic Norton Firewall, now it's, it's included in the security suite, uh, it offers basic packet filtering. Ability to block outbound traffic. Uh, it can block an infected machine from propagating a virus. Uh, blocks ports that a, a Trojan horse might try to communicate on. It does support uh, add and pop-up blocking. And you can scan your machine through the semantic website, so you got a little bit more flexibility. McAfee, uh, it's included in their total protection suite. 
comes many different versions, blocks inbound and outbound traffic. It tracks, uh, it has a tracking feature which shows on a map the path where the attack is coming from. It's also connected to a hackerwatch.org site that you can get uh, posed questions to, get response to, communicate, just to verify what's what's going on. And then some of the advanced features offer some basic intrusion detection uh, features. Now, for your small office, now that's for a single machine. Now for small office, home office, Soho, uh, both Norton and McAfee offer solutions at a slightly higher cost. Um, Sonic Wall TZ series, uh, it's another one that you may not have heard about. It offers a stateful packet inspection, built-in encryption. It's easy to manage, and it's got built-in uh, network address translation. So it, it is one that you could add to your list to, to investigate. Uh, D-Link, the 2560 Office Firewall, it, it has a lot of features in it. Uh, built-in encryption, whitelist, blacklisting. Uh, has intrusion detection systems built in, has built in antivirus, it has stateful packet inspection, uh, it combines multiple different firewall types, and it has built in NAT and VPN. So it has a lot of benefits to it. Now, for a medium size fire network firewall, now that's fine for anything larger than. 25 users and up to 700 users at a single location. Um, you, you often have dedicated administrators working on this. And a couple of solutions you may want to think about is Checkpoint Firewall or Cisco Next Generation uh, Firewalls. Now the Checkpoint Firewall, it's a hybrid packet filtering application gateway. Uh, it can protect against uh, SYN and oversizing packet automatically. Uh, as you can tell, a little pricey, $3,000 to $50,000. Uh, does include uh, intrusion prevention systems. Has protections against zero-day threats. It supports VPN. And not simple to administer or configure. Now, Cisco's next generation, it's usually an external device and adaptive security compliance. Uh, many different models and capabilities. Uh, the ASA 5500 uh, offers VPNs, intrusion protection, content filtering, unified communication security. Uh, it requires mod moderate skill to configure administer. So uh, if you enjoyed your Cisco classes and be able to, you know, program the switches and routers, uh, this may be right up your alley to look into their ASA product. Now, from an enterprise standpoint, very large companies typically use uh, over a WAN. Uh, definitely extremely compact security situation, usually a team of administrators of security professionals. Uh, so not one that most of us are going to get into. So this chapter was just outlined a different uh, solutions based on the size of your network. Um, and then of course it allows you to give you choice. So if you're doing a single machine, uh, they're cost, they're easy, they're inexpensive, easy to set up. Uh, smaller offices, they typically easy to set up and administer without a whole lot of work. Once you get to the medium and enterprise systems, definitely requires a whole lot more knowledge in firewall and administration. So you, you're going to need some training on those. But for most of us, the home or the small office ones, they are probably the ones that probably we will run into 90% of the time. So hopefully that gives you a rough idea on some of the stuff. Look at the chapter material uh, for some of the details, and you're going to get a chance to play with some of these in the lab. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.